Hello, I'm Stephen Hogan and welcome to the Stop Hunter's Guide to Technical Analysis. Today, in part six, we'll be looking at alternative concepts in the field of technical analysis. Some of these more mainstream, some maybe a bit more obscure to new users of the subject. So how have these theories and ideas developed over time? It, they've grown really with technical analysis and how it's expanded, um, the growth in computer science and technology and software have allowed people to come up with many new ideas and be able to apply them. And some, are, on the other hand, are very old concepts and thoughts that have come from some of the most, you would think, strangest of places, but they seem to work for the users of these tools. As it says there, there's thousands of different ideas and we're only going to look very briefly at just a few today. And there are concepts such as the phases of the moon. Bizarre as that sounds, people use those to trade, you know, like a, a theory of tidal waves. You know, the tides coming in and out around the moon and how markets go up and down. Um, fractals, proprietary tools around channels, bands, oscillators, volumes. Uh, strength tools. There's just so many that we haven't got time to go into, but as you dig into technical analysis, you'll find more and more of these ideas and concepts. Some just simple derivatives of older ideas. But my theory is um, that if it works for you, then however bizarre or strange a concept might appear, I have no problem with you using it. Today though, we're just gonna look at three more of the straightforward ideas in themselves, very vast fields, and you could focus just on these for your trading if you really wanted to. Uh, Elliott Wave, GAN, and Market Profile. So what's Elliott Wave theory? Um, probably the most mainstream one we're gonna look at, devised by Ralph Elliott, uh, and it's a methodology for measuring cycles and forecasting trends. It's a premise that the market behaves in a, an irregular, cyclic fashion um, around this idea through technical analysis use measurement um, techniques to help quantify um, these sort of waves and cycles i say it's very discretionary but like i said overlaid and added to other tools in the field of technical analysis can be quite strong um, one of its close partners is fibonacci as we saw a few weeks ago so the basic theory of elliott wave theory um, is built around the concept of the wave and it says the market is a series of waves of various length and size and it's determined these waves as a price move in one direction as set by the reversal points that started and ended the move and that the wave is further broken down into two waves called the impulse wave and the corrective wave and the impulse wave is in the direction of the current trend and the corrective against it and that impulse wave is made up of five subwaves numbered one to five and the corrective wave is broken down into three subwaves a b and c so the rules which are many um, in elliott wave theory and quite complex going to which we won't cover off here do spell out how to use the theory but if you're looking for a book or to go further into the topic there's a lot of um, content online but one book here Applying Elliott Wave Theory, profitably by Stephen W. Poser, could be a useful starting point for you. I say Elliott Wave is a very useful trading tool and it can help determine trends, price targets um, and retracements. But its downside, I guess, is it's quite subjective and some would argue works better more as a hindsight tool. And I will leave that up for you to decide, but don't rule it out and have a look at how it works. Here's a typical example on Coco. We've got our different waves, one, two, three, four, five, and then we've got a corrective wave at the bottom. Just a simple example of how you'd lay that out on your chart. And you'll get on uh, software of chart packages these days, tools that will help you structure that um, wave pattern and even predict future moves and um, waves and cycles. So GAN, probably the most controversial one we'll look at today, but he himself, W.G. Gann, was an extremely successful commodity trader in the early part of the 20th century, and he created a trading concept built around angles, fans, lines, and grids. And he believed in cycles and seasonality, and he built um, a methodology for forecasting and analyzing 
these markets that he traded based around geometry and astronomy and astrology and um, some very ancient mathematics are in there for good measure as well. And you can already see why some people, when I mention the words astronomy and astrology, might think this is a bit uh, so Google, but again, it works for some people and is very popular in the world of technical analysis, so don't rule it out. What did he believe? That the most important angle on any trend was 45 degrees, that makes sense, when you think of supply and demand and the strength of trends. And he created a simple fan concept with nine plotted angles based around a 45 degree line that can be used as a tool for anticipating reversals. And his concepts have been interpreted many ways because um, it's often very hard to interpret his concepts, but have become like I said, very popular. Hard to quantify and measure. And as you can understand, there's many skeptics. Just got a couple of examples for you here. This is the GAN box method. And we're looking, I think here at WTI oil and it literally just an overlay looks very colorful, but we've got price objectives and time objectives built into a simple price chart. And here we see his fan method on the same crude oil. And we're looking for reversal and turning points within these fans. There's a nice example there as it bounced off and moved back. So finally, a market profile. This was a real practical application developed by J. Peter Stegelmeyer, um, who's a trader on the Chicago pits and from his everyday experience wanted to really know the behavior of individual markets and he developed the market profile technique uh, which is price on vertical time and activity on the horizontal and is not a time price series chart as we'd be used to and he wanted to be able to evaluate um, the market value intraday and he found that being able to observe fair value created trading opportunity and his concept recognizes the normal Gaussian distribution. What else is on the market profile chart? Um, it displays price activity recorded in relation to time in a statistical bell shaped curve. So for your statisticians out there, you might recognize it. And it's fatter in the middle prices with activity trailing off at higher and lower prices. Uh, this then portrays ease with which the market allows facilitation of trading and the manner in which it takes place. Now the chart's very useful for obvious reasons to identify and it also helps identify the class of the trader, um, either a local or commercial, for example, and basically it gives us a better understanding of who is controlling the price action. Is it the floor traders or so maybe longer term players in the market? So here's an example I pulled from Bloomberg, and this is a US 10 year treasury note. You can see there's distribution curves over the days to see where key price levels are. So market profile probably not as accessible as some to on charting software and packages. So there is a um, alternative of sorts, um, not exactly the same, it's called volume at price. And this is more widely used. Again, you can see that same sort of distribution of volume around the price levels and you've got point of control areas and bands that you can work out where resistance and support could um, start where prices might bounce off and retrace and turn around. So this is on the Nikkei 225. And as you can see, currently most of the volume in this distribution shape is around current price action uh, through the 2200 sort of area. So that's called volume at price, um, a good alternative to get you started on the thinking of market profile. In conclusion for alternative concepts, Elliott Wave, Theory, GAN, market profile, I don't particularly use them in my trading. And that's not because I don't disagree with them. It's just that they don't suit my style of trading and personality of trading, or even for that matter, risk appetite. Um, but like I said, they work very, very well for other people. So don't discount them. Never discount anything because it might be the thing for you. Investigate it, look at it. Um, then if it doesn't work for you, exclude it. But you never know. This could be your home run um, in the world of technical analysis for your trading yeah explore find out and like i said earlier if it makes if it works for you and makes you money then it can't be knocked so we've now covered off the alternative concepts and in the next session we'll be looking at my actual favorite area of technical analysis and it's i'm going to give you an introduction 
to Japanese charts and we'll be looking at four specific types. Haikinashi, Renko, Line Break and Kagi. We've already seen one idea, Ichimoko, in an earlier episode. But these four I particularly like and use. So thank you very much and I look forward to you to joining me in part seven, an introduction to Japanese charts. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.